Okay. Um, obviously, this is a unique uh, week for us, just with uh, with the schedule adjustments and uh, you know playing Arizona here on Thursday and playing them again on Monday. It's uh, definitely a different scenario, but uh, probably one that was necessary, just with uh, the postponements and again leaving that that final week available to uh, to try and get additional games in. Um, Outside of that, um, we're, we're starting to get healthier um, as a team. We're, uh, we're starting to get in a better routines, with, you know, with our practice and, you know, with our training. Um, you know, we, uh, we had Jalen Graham back yesterday in uh, individual skill workout with Coach Berno, and then he'll get an opportunity to, uh, you know, to practice some today. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're hopeful, that, you know, if he looks good that, that he would uh, he would be available uh, Thursday, which would obviously be a big boost for us. Um, outside of that, I could uh, you know just let you guys take it from there and and see where you want to take this uh, conversation. Sounds good. Tress, we'll go. Tressa, Jacob, Jordan, Spurgeon. Coach, good morning. Thank you for your time. Um, just obviously the general excitement and enthusiasm around playing the rival, and how is the team responding to kind of that legacy of playing? Wildcats. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a different feel always, and um, you should have a few more knots in your stomach. Um, you should uh, you should be a little more edgy. There should be a little more chippiness today in practice. That's what I'm hoping, and that that would uh, that would alert me that the guys understand, you know, the magnitude of the game, and uh, like like it always is, you know, every year. Um, it will be different with, with no fans, uh, but, but certainly uh, doesn't change the importance of it, uh, you know, for both schools. And uh, so we're, we're just excited to have an opportunity to play it. Jacob and Jordan. Hey, Bobby. Uh, after the Oregon State game, Alonzo Verge had said that he felt that the performance was the first step towards the team getting to where you guys really want it to be. Uh, I'm curious, as you enter this stretch of back-to-back -back rivalry games, what are the things that you think remain before you guys are really at that level that you're trying to get to as a whole? Well, we have to solidify our front court, and, and we got to get healthier, and, and, and Jalen Graham is, is a step in the right direction with, with regards to that, especially, you know, what Arizona brings to the table with their front line and how good they've been in the paint and uh, how good they've been as a rebounding team this year. So, uh Certainly, we're going to need, you know, need to get those guys uh, performing at, at, at a good level and making sure that we, we're all committing to protecting the lane and rebounding the basketball. Those are you know, going to be major priorities in this game. Um, but I, I think that, that Zoe is, is probably right. I'm, I'm getting instincts. They're telling me that we're playing better basketball. I think, uh, you know, I, I watched uh, Oregon State play USC yesterday, so... Um, when you see something like that happen uh, really quickly after we just played them and USC had won six straight games and, and Oregon State knocked them off yesterday. So, okay, you know, was were we just brutal or, or is Oregon State getting better? And I think uh, it's probably more that they're playing really well right now and, and uh, we might have ran into them at the wrong time this season. Um, because I thought we did a lot of things uh, that would equate to winning against Oregon State. And uh, so uh, I think we are on the right track and we got to continue to do it, um, continue to, to do the things we've been doing to giving ourselves chances to win and, and hopefully it'll turn for us. But uh, when you are losing, man, you, 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 say, you, you wonder if you're ever going to win again, you know, and, and uh, that's the feeling in my, in my stomach right now. It's just not something that sits well with any of us and you know we hate to lose and we're all competitors and we're in pain right now and we got to figure out a way to get out of it coach obviously new year new team and uh you got to take it one game at a time but is there any indications you're seeing that maybe your team is ready to go on a run maybe similar to last year when you won seven straight well, I just think our offense really came around the last game. Our, our efficiency, our, our, our numbers were very good outside of the three-point line, and we've been spending more time shooting and practice and focusing on that. I just uh, – I think how we attacked the paint was very good, you know, against Oregon State. We, 
you know, won that by a substantial margin. Uh, just got to clean up some little things like we, you know, we got split on a post trap in the first half and, and left Lucas open for a three. Um, you know, we, we allowed their big to spin baseline out of a trap to start the second half and they scored. You know, when you know you're getting a trap, you know, you never let the guy spin baseline out of it. So they're just little subtle breakdowns, uh, you know, fouling three-point shooters, can't do that. So we, we're trying to eliminate those things. And if we can, I think we'll be closer to finding the results we're looking for. Tyler Drake, Hode, and then Chris Cartman. Hey, Coach. Uh, I just wanted to see if there's any updates regarding the uh, postponed games for rescheduling. Um, you know, nothing at the moment. And again, the, the, the Pac-12 and, and uh, you know, our sports administrators and uh, are all working on that. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. But I, I have no new, uh, nothing new to tell you about that right now. Hode, Chris Cartman, Doug Holler. Hey, Bobby. Um, I know this uh, U of A team uh, looks really different with uh, having uh, three one and duns uh, no longer on the roster. Um, but do you notice it's just uh, same scheme, different players, or do you think their roster makeup has uh, caused uh, this version of this U of A team to look uh, maybe much different than the last year or two? Well, I mean, they got great size. And, you know, you talk about Jordan Brown, Taboulis, um, Ira Lee, they just got, you know, good, you know, a really good deep front court that uh, that could rebound and score in the paint. Uh, Aquino is is a guy that's that's been a veteran guard that's uh, done a great job for them. And you know, I you mentioned like programs that have high level freshmen, and, and you better put Arizona in that conversation with the way Tabulas and and Matherin have been playing, and 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 Dale and Terry. So they have some really nice pieces, you know, as freshmen. You know, in addition to you know, really a veteran front court. Bobby, it was exactly a year ago that you were one and three to start the Pac-12. Uh, a few questions on that. Are there any parallels that you see, even though this is a totally new group? Have you talked about that with uh, the team? And is there anything that you take from that that can maybe help you guys this year? I mean, I, I mentioned the irony of it and, and you know, um, but there's no guarantees that, that this year will be like last year in that regard. We, uh, you know, we have to continue to do what we've been doing the last three games to, to give ourselves chances to win. And then I, 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 I am a believer that, you know, when a particular group of people learn how to win and break through that, you know, there is a chance that you just figure out how to win these things down the stretch and, and they could come in bunches. Um, but, you know, we got to be able to break through and we haven't been able to do that the last three games, even though we've been in these games, you know, inside the last four minutes with a chance to win all three of them. Bobby, we talked a lot about uh, Marcus's shooting um, leading up to the season and his athletic ability, but is there any part of his game that you've seen so far that maybe you didn't expect uh, this early from him? I, I just say uh, sometimes you, you get labeled and, and he's such a, you know, fluid, smooth offensive player, but, but he's, uh, I think more of what I'm learning is just uh, what a winner he is. And uh, the guy really, you know, stepped up, made big shots late in that game. Uh, you know, uh, Ethan Thompson got Josh in a little bit of foul trouble because we wanted to go big with, with, uh, with Josh on Thompson to, to avoid the, uh, the post-up situation. And, uh, and when Josh was in foul trouble, we went to Marcus and Marcus did a great job on him. Now it probably uh, hurt us some with the rebounding because he's probably away from the basket more than we needed him to be. And, um, but he'll do whatever we need him to do, uh, to try and win basketball games. And, uh, so that's what I'm noticing, just, uh, you know, doing the little things that, that are at the charges and all the things that you don't usually see a five-star player, especially as a freshman so early in his career, have the willingness uh, to want to do, take that responsibility. And also, is there any sort of update on Tayshon right now? Uh, I mean, Tayshon I, is still, you know, in, in a similar uh, position that he was the last time, you know, we spoke about him and... Uh, Again, he's he's just going to take take some time away and and get in a better space and uh, and we're supportive of that and and you know we didn't anticipate that was going to 
be one week. So, um, you know, I, I'll let you know, guys know more as, as I have more information on when he might think about returning if he's going to consider returning this year. So, uh, Chris Farndorf, Cam Cox, Bruce Pasco. Hey, Coach, like you mentioned, um, you know, obviously your team getting some some players back that, um, you know, were key to your team's success. Um, and in some instrumental victories like Remy and, and Graham back on the team will, will obviously help going forward. But is there anything that you think needs to change in your team's play um, going forward for the team to – get some wins under their belt in the conference and gain that momentum going forward. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, it was it was, uh, it was was terrific to have Remy back. You know, yeah, I didn't even realize he hadn't played a game in a month. I mean, that's how, like, crazy things have been here just to, you know, you're, you're dealing with so many things on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't even realize that, hey, this guy hasn't been out here in a month. Um, so getting him back was a plus. Um, you know, I think we have to shoot the three better. Overall, uh, again, you look at our last three games and, and our opponent has made like three, three or four more three-point shots than we have and our percentages have not been great. So, you know, we got to figure out how to, uh, how to make some open shots and, and, and close that gap a little, little bit because we are playing, you know, a number of small guys, even Marcus. Marcus is a big wing, man. He's, he's, not, a, he's not a four man. So we're, we're playing a lot of perimeter players. So we got to, we got to shoot it a little better. And uh, because we are scrapping right now, we're showing more resiliency. We're, uh, we're battling harder on defense and in the paint. Now we just got to add a, a little more efficiency, you know, to how we shoot the basketball. Hey Bobby, hope all is well. It's good to see you. you. Um, just curious, since you got here, what have you learned about this rivalry and how much do you enjoy coaching in this game against Arizona? And then I don't know if you saw it earlier in the season, but I believe there was a cutout of you at the McHale Center. I mean, it just goes to speak on how serious some fans kind of take this rivalry. Yeah, I mean, it's it's heated, and 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 I've said it. It's um, you know, it, it might lack the overall tradition of two programs like like Duke and Carolina, just and uh, in, in what they've accomplished over decades and decades of, of play, but. You know, you, you understand the importance of it. You know, you feel the tension, you know, and uh, it's a different vibe this week. I could tell the guys that have been in, have been in these matchups and, uh, you know, Remy and, and Kamani are three and three in their career versus Arizona, which uh, I'm not sure, you know, many, many guys that have played here for four years have been. So I think there's a lot on the line for those guys and their legacy at Arizona State. And, um an opportunity to, to possibly have a winning record versus Arizona in four years. I don't know. Maybe Doug could send you that info out to see how many guys at Arizona State have had a winning record in four years versus Arizona. So uh, there's a lot to play for. Uh, you know, I, I've been saying this, said it before Oregon State, our season is that kind of a, a critical juncture. And it's, you know, no different right now. So, you know, so much to play for tomorrow. Bruce Pasco, Paul Richardson, Ethan Ryder. Yeah, uh, Bobby, you've alluded to some of this, and of course, everybody's had interruptions in this this crazy season. But um, it seems like with you guys, I don't know. Do, do you feel like uh, you've ever been kind of at full strength where things are normal? As has it been like a constant battle where where you know you're looking over your shoulder and so and so and so is missing, or you know, kind of kind of what's the big picture? What it's, what it, what it's been like for you? I mean, I do feel like we've we've got to be in one of the tiers that have, have gotten the worst of it tier. Now, I don't know what other schools you're going to throw into that because there's so much happening nationally that teams are going into the pauses and they're losing players. But we, you know, it started in, at Cal for us. That was our first taste of it, to be on the road and, and to not know who's going to be available to coach and which players are going to be available to play the day of the game and then going to play it and, I don't have my associate head coach and don't have Alonzo Verge. He was contact traced, so he was out. And then it went to Bagley being out for an injury for a few weeks. And then, and then Remy with the unfortunate uh, you know, family uh, situation with his grandfather. And, and then the pause. And, you know, so we've had a lot, you know, and then Jalen Graham with Mono. So there's been a list of things that have happened to us that really typically haven't happened uh, here in the past. And, so, but we, uh, 
just trying to make the best of it. Uh, no matter if you have Remy Martin and, and a few guys that have played together, still trying to incorporate new guys and get them to play together uh, is something that, you know, you need time to build and develop. And yeah. I'm not sure we always had a, exactly enough time to do all that. Yeah. I was wondering about uh, Remy, too, and looking back on that Oregon State game. Do you, when he came back, do you think he was maybe forcing it a little bit or over anxious to be back when, you know, his, his shooting was off that game? And, you know, I don't know. Do you feel like he's back to normal maybe a little bit more now? I thought he um, he did a good job defensively. He had a couple steals. He, he made his big free throws down the stretch. He, uh, he had eight assists and no turnovers. So he did, like, a lot of things well. He just uh, – you know, he, he, I think he was 0 for 7 or 0 for 8 from 3. I think some of them were good looks. We're trying to get him to be more aggressive. And, uh, and so I want him taking a lot of those shots. So I, I don't have a problem with it. He's made so many big ones here. Uh, I'm good with it. Thanks. Two more. Paul Richardson, Ethan Ryder. Hey, Coach, I know you, you say a lot, business as usual, but is there anything special or different that you say uh, going into this game or, or – before the directly before the game, um, I guess I'm asking if you have a, a new Rockney speech in your back pocket that you're waiting to pull out. Look, you need to you need to break those out for uh, you know, and again, some of the lower tier opponents that that you're going to face. If 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 your guys aren't motivated and enthusiastic for this opportunity to play, you know, a, a program like Arizona, then uh, then you're in the wrong business and. Uh, so if anything, for me, I think it's going to be, you know, are these guys, you know, can I get them to just relax and play? Like they're going to, they're going to be ready to play. They're excited to play. They're going to, you know, they're going to want to play hard and compete. You know, I just don't want them to be tense. I don't want them to be trying to do too much. I don't want them to, uh, you know, I want them to relax and just, you know, and, and so if anything, I, I'm going to be, I think, just trying to chill them out more than to amp them up. Coach, talking about maybe having those players ready to play in two back-to-back -back games against Arizona, and then Verge talking about maybe being close to where you guys want to be. Do you see these two games as like a possible turning point for your season with the team ready to play and the possible good results? I think where we are, and uh, you know what our record is, and and again what um, the adversities we've been through, um, the close losses. Of course, uh, we got to figure out a way to win and. We are running out of time. So uh, certainly this is a very, very critical game uh, on Thursday.